Hey friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress, and today I'm going to show you how I made this rolling tool stand for my lathe in just one weekend and for under $50 in lumber. Let's get started. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that my workshop is really small, like 12 by 12 shed small. And before I had this workshop, I had another workshop that was even smaller. So for the past three or four years, I've been building and publishing different plans for varying rolling tool stands to house all of my tools. That way I can move them out of the way when I'm working on a bigger project and they need the space. So now plans for these mobile stands have been on my website for about two or three years, but every time I publish one, you guys ask me to make a video and this is perfect timing because Jet just sent me a brand new upgraded big girl wood turning lathe and I needed a stand for it, but I also needed it on a budget. So like my other mobile tool stands, I started by purchasing a bunch of 2x4s, I think 15 to be exact, and they came in under $50 in lumber. I then started by cutting all the longest pieces that I had in my build, which were the top shelf pieces and three out of five of the bottom shelf pieces. Now to make things a little simpler, I did start by just assembling the shelf pieces first, and if you would like to follow along, you can find plans for this build on my website by clicking on the link below this video. Something else I did with this stand that I didn't do with any of my other stands was I actually cut off all of the rounded edges of the 2x4s and I'll be running them through the planer as well. These steps are totally optional if you don't have a planer or a table saw, but I wanted to do something a little different here and I'll be laminating these pieces together with glue instead of using pocket hole joinery like I usually do. So as I mentioned earlier, after cutting all of the round edges off, I just ran all of my pieces through the planer. And if you look at the plans that I published for this project, you will see that all of the dimensions for this tool stand were made prior to planing and cutting the pieces, just in case you guys don't have a planer in your shop. Once all the shelf pieces were cut and planed, I began setting up a station for the glue up. And I did this by using some brown craft paper and blue tape to protect my workbenches. I then added clamps and began adding all of the pieces for the top shelf in one set of clamps and the bottom shelf in another set of clamps. In terms of panel glue up, I did glue all five pieces of the top shelf together for this build, but when I glued up the bottom shelf, I actually only glued up three out of the five pieces together, and that's because if I glued up all five, then the bottom shelf won't fit on the shelf that I build later on, and you'll see that in a little bit. In terms of the glue up, I added a ton of glue and then used a glue brush in order to spread out all of the glue really evenly and then I flipped all of the boards onto their sides and used clamps to press them together super tightly. As pressure was applied to the board, some glue did squeeze out of each of the crevices so I did keep a damp paper towel around to wipe away any of the excess glue. One other thing I did to keep the board straight was also add a couple of clamps to the ends of the boards and clamp those boards directly down to the clamps underneath. And once those top and bottom panels were clamped up, I set them aside to dry and began working on the rest of the stand. Before I could get started on cutting the legs for this piece, I had to figure out how tall I wanted it. And because it is holding my lathe, I needed to do some math. So there is a formula that you can use to figure out how high you want your stand to be if you are using it for a lathe. And I have published that in my plans to make life easier. But to make my life easier on the day of this build, I actually just piled up a couple of 2x4s to the same height of my lathe and then pretended to turn and then use that height to decide where I wanted my lathe to sit on the stand. And once I had gotten those measurements, I then transferred the height of the legs to the leg pieces and brought them to my miter saw to trim down along with the long side pieces, the short side pieces, the short shelf pieces, and also the support braces. Now I know I just spit out a lot of parts, but as I mentioned earlier, if you visit my website, you can check out the full list of every part I cut along with the dimensions to make this so much easier. One thing that I did make sure to do when using the miter saw to trim all of the pieces was to trim them a little longer than I needed to because after bringing them to the miter saw, I brought all of the pieces to the table saw, cut off the round edges, and then planed them down to size. So this meant that the legs were actually a little thinner than they were when I initially made my measurements. And that meant that after thinning everything down, I had to bring the pieces back to the miter saw with the exception of the legs and just cut everything down to its final length. After trimming all of the pieces to their final size, I brought pretty much every piece except for the leg pieces and the short shelf pieces to my pocket hole jig where I began to drill pocket holes in each end of each piece, as well as along one side of every piece. That way I could connect these pieces to the legs as well as to the top and bottom shelf. If this is really confusing because I know it's a lot, I do have a pocket hole placement diagram on the plans for this build. 
After getting all of these pieces cut to size and drilled with pocket holes, I decided to call it a day and just placed everything in neat piles with labels on them. I then started the next day of work by first removing the panels from their glue ups and they looked awesome. Prior to assembling, I then gave all of the pieces a really nice sanding. Next, it was time for assembly and I started by focusing on attaching the short side pieces to the legs to create two sides. And I did this by using wood glue as well as pocket hole screws and a clamp to make sure that everything was in place. I also used a speed square because the last thing that we want is for our tool stand to be crooked because then our tools will be crooked. I then continued this process using the other three side pieces and the other three legs and assembled them so that I could create the two rectangular side pieces of the lathe stand. One important thing to note here was to pay attention to the direction of the other pocket holes on this piece so they were definitely facing up so that I can screw the top shelf into the piece from the bottom. After the two side panels were assembled, it was time to start building the lathe stand itself and I did this by taking the two side panels and attaching them together using the really long front and back pieces. To get started, I first laid out this on the floor of my workshop and then began the assembly process. I then assembled these pieces the same way as the other pieces using wood glue and pocket hole screws and I kept a square nearby just to make sure that everything was where it needed to be. One thing that really did help during this build was having a square that I could attach to the pieces while inserting the pocket hole screws and that way I was able to just kind of align everything before setting everything in place permanently. And again here I was really careful to make sure that all of the pocket hole screws that were along the other edges of these pieces were pointing in the right direction because I will need to attach the top and bottom shelf later. After assembling the frame, it was time to begin assembling the entire lathe stand. So I started by placing the top shelf flat on the floor and then brought in the frame that I just built to place on top of it. Now this is about the fourth or fifth rolling tool stand that I have built for my shop. And at this point in the other builds, I start attaching the support braces in between the longer front and back pieces in order to just give the lathe stand a little bit more support. But I actually decided for this specific one to forego that because I do need as much space on the bottom shelf as possible to store some tall tools. So I went ahead and began attaching the frame to the top shelf and then took some time to mull it over, see if I really needed the supports in there, figure out how roomy it was, take a snack break, and then after deciding that the stand was pretty sturdy and that my lathe stand or my lathe is really not going anywhere, I left it alone and just moved on to the next part. That's not to say that I won't keep an eye on how the stand holds up and possibly add them in the future and my published plans do actually have these supports in place in case you want to put them on your own stand. Now attaching the bottom shelf was a little tricky and this is why I only glued up three panels instead of gluing up all five. So basically what I did is I attached the three panels snugly to the inside of the sides and clamped them into place. And by clamping them into place, I was then able to screw them into place permanently with some pocket hole screws from the underside using the pocket hole openings that I made earlier in my pieces. Once that center piece was in place permanently, I then began to add the two shorter shelf pieces by clamping them to the frame and attaching them the same exact way as that center piece using pocket hole screws from the underside. Once the lathe stand was fully assembled, it was time to flip it over. And actually after flipping this thing over and realizing just how heavy it was, it really did reassure me that it was going to be sturdy enough for my lathe. So that made me feel better. But once I was able to get it right side up or proper way up, it was then time to attach the casters. 
Now the casters that I decided to use for my lathe stand are drop down casters and what this does is allow me to lay the stand flat against the floor when I'm using the lathe but then prop the casters up to be able to move it around when I need it out of my way. I also had to make sure that I used heavy duty casters because this lathe is probably about 200 pounds and I needed four casters that would be able to support the weight when I do actually have to move the stand out of the way. In order to install these casters I followed the instructions in the manual but one thing that was really helpful was to have my DeWalt drill and driver next to me because I was able to use one drill in order to pre-drill the holes and the driver in order to drive the screws in. And once they were installed, I gave them a little test run and they worked beautifully. Next came my favorite part of the project, which was getting my brand new lathe off of my workshop floor. And luckily my brother and my dad were there to help and I was there to help guide. And I was actually really nervous that the casters would blow out or not work, but everything seemed to work okay. So we cleared some space and then moved the lathe stand into its permanent spot. And then I made sure to secure the lathe to the stand from underneath. And then once everything was set and the casters were still intact, I broke out into a happy dance because that's just what I do. I can't believe it, but I've been in my new shop space for about a year now and I'm finally feeling like it's coming together and looking like a fully functioning shop. And now I have a little bit more storage, which makes me super happy and also my big girl lathe and I can't wait to start using it. A lot of you guys have been asking for shop projects for a while, so I really hope that you like this video and I do promise that there will be more shop projects coming soon, especially since I'm really starting to make this space mine. So if there are any specific shop projects that you want to see on my channel, please let me know down below. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and happy DIY.